spermidine is another molecule that I wanted to talk about. Um, I think you also have a paper on that, how it yeah. uh, protects uh, or induces autophagy uh, and protects against metabolic dysfunction. Uh, what are some of the studies you're, you're doing in your lab around spermidine? Yeah, so the, the spermidine data is interesting because um, another natural product, uh, but this one actually comes in food. You can't get NAD or AKG in food because um, the molecule gets used up so fast. But mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of plants that make spermidine. And actually, your gut microbiome can make spermidine too. Um, <coughs> so um, I just got tested for COVID. Don't worry, I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> um, the, and then you can supplement it. So And your body can make it. So uh, there are a lot of sources of it. Uh, and uh, people got excited about it. You know, Frank Medeo, Guido Kramer uh, did a lot of research on this because it was an autophagy activator. Uh, and of course, there's been a lot of data linking uh, enhanced autophagy to longer lifespan in worms and mice uh, as well. Um, so, you know, I, I, again, we're trying to test a lot of different things in humans and I kind of have a, a rule, which is if I can't get it to work in mice, I'm not going to spend a lot of money on a human study. Now, there are a lot of things I can't get to work in mice that are published, and I'm, I'm not going to go so far as to say that I'm right and whoever else is wrong, and maybe we're using the wrong conditions or the wrong source of the molecule, or there are lots of things that could be going wrong, but I just feel a lot better if I see something positive happening. Um, and spermidine was a, it was a hit for us. It it, 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 it re we didn't do a lot, the lifespan curve on a lot of mice, but the, but the small sort of study we did was consistent with what's been found that it extends lifespan. And uh, it was reported uh, not to have a big effect on metabolism, which is unusual for a longevity drug. And so we wanted to go back and stress the animals a little bit more. And, and sure enough, in young animals, it doesn't have that big of an effect on metabolism. But if you look at old animals, it protects them. It's definitely on our list as a molecule that we should try and in human studies. Fantastic, yeah. So I, I guess if some of these are just natural molecules, right, that are used by the body, say just AKG, spermidine, NAD, and um, if I'm supplementing with a lot of these, um, I know you said earlier Supplement that you're- Supplement a few of them, please, not a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 so that's my question. I know you said you're, you're wary of people supplementing with a lot of them together, but if they're just naturally used by the body, then why should there be a concern if I'm supplementing with all of them? I, I'm not particularly concerned about causing toxicity or having adverse outcomes. I just think they may cancel each other out with respect to aging because that's what we think mice. And so let me give you an example theoretically of what might happen. So you have rapamycin, it turns down Tor signaling, mm -hmm. and then you add another molecule, maybe AKG, and it turns Tor signaling down even more. And now it's too low, <laughs> you know, as opposed to you need to have that pathway on at certain times as well. Uh, and so if it's too low, um, then you're do maybe doing bad things, right? So uh, until we know more mechanistically about what these things are doing, I think it's hard to predict how they're going to combine and whether it's going to be additive or they'll cancel each other out. So, But you're right, natural products tend to be safer. Um, that doesn't mean they're completely safe. Uh, if you give too much vitamin A to a mice, it's not good for them. And I, I have data to prove it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, um, the, uh, but in general, they're safer because your body's used to using them. And so if you look at something like AKG or NAD, that gets consumed really fast. A lot of drugs become toxic because they build up in the body. Uh, and uh, you start getting higher and higher doses over time, and that can do things you're not, you don't want them to do. It's hard to imagine getting too much AKG because it's just it's used up so fast in chemical reactions. And so the benefit of these molecules is probably the reactions that they drive, not the cute labels that accumulate in the body. And of course, when it comes to drugs, you've got things that the body hasn't seen before, and you have more unexpected outcomes. Now, notice I didn't say that natural products are completely safe <laughs> because that's not true. Uh, but uh, most of the molecules that are on the market that come from the aging research field, um, I think that are pretty safe right now. I mean, the NAD precursors that we haven't seen a lot of adverse events or anything from that. The AKG, there's a lot of data on um, and some of the other molecules that are out there. Um, so it's a little bit 
wild west right now. And uh, like I said, I don't mind that as long as the people making these products are, are sure that they're not taking a big risk with individuals. So.